Hi everyone, I'm Mohak Bharadwaj and today I'll be presenting a work on differentiable Gaussian process motion planning. Trajectory optimization aims at solving the problem of generating a robot trajectory from a start to a goal configuration that is smooth, collision-free, and satisfies user-defined constraints such as joint limits, velocity limits, and other task-specific constraints like maintaining contact or orientation of objects. The Gaussian Process Motion Planner 2 is a leading optimization-based approach to motion planning that has been shown to scale to a wide array of problems, such as planning for high-dimensional manipulators, navigation, and model predictive control. GPMP2 formulates trajectory optimization as maximum a posteriori inference on a factor graph and finds solutions via nonlinear least squares optimization, where the inverse covariances of the factors manifest as weights in the objective function. To understand the workings of GPMP2, we take a closer look at the objective function. The nonlinear least squares objective of GPMP2 consists of two terms. The first error term corresponds to a Gaussian process prior over trajectories with mean mu and kernel matrix kappa and is used to encourage smoothness in the trajectory theta. GPMP2 uses structured GP priors such that the inverse of the kernel matrix is exactly block tridiagonal making it ideal for fast inference. The second term captures planning requirements in the form of events E that the trajectory must satisfy. These include constraint satisfaction, such as collision avoidance, joint or velocity limits, or other task-relevant objectives. For example, the collision avoidance likelihood can be defined in terms of a sign distance field. Kappa and sigma correspond to the covariances of prior and likelihood respectively and are usually parameters set by the user. The optimization problem is then solved using iterative methods such as Gauss-Newton or LM, which proceed by linearizing the objective around the current estimate of the trajectory and computing an update till a convergence criterion is met. In practice, the performance of the planner can be highly sensitive to the parameter settings such as sigma, the covariance on the obstacle factors. To get a more intuitive view of this, consider two fixed values of sigma, sigma 1 and sigma 2, with a larger sigma corresponding to a lower weight on obstacle avoidance. These values are generally hand-tuned. Now consider the first type of environment, a forest of obstacles. Here, starting from a straight line initialization, a smaller sigma is unable to squeeze in between the obstacles as it tries to push the trajectory as far away from them as possible. However, a larger sigma is able to skirt along the obstacles and find a feasible trajectory. But what happens if the obstacle distribution changes as in environment two, where the obstacles are clustered around the center of the workspace? Here, a smaller sigma is able to make large steps and warp the straight line trajectory to one side of the obstacle pit, whereas a larger sigma simply gets stuck in a local minimum. This illustrates a critical shortcoming, that setting the parameters properly can have a significant impact on the practical performance of the algorithm, sometimes making the difference between finding a feasible plan or failing at the task entirely. However, in practice, there does not exist any formal method to set these parameters that ensures consistent performance across a diverse range of environments. This leads us to our main research question. Can we leverage experience on past planning problems to automatically adapt the parameters, namely the factor covariances of GPMP2? In order to answer this, we leverage the key insight that GPMP2 can be rebuilt as a fully differentiable computational graph, and the parameters for its objective function can be learned from data in an end-to-end -end fashion, either using expert demonstrations or in a self-supervised manner. We start with the planning module P that implements a single step of the non-linear least squares algorithm. At iteration I, P takes as input the current estimate of the trajectory, theta I, the environment representation, and a vector of fixed parameters phi f specified by the user. It uses these to construct the factor graph. It then linearizes the factor graph around theta i and solves the linear system to compute the optimal delta theta. 
the estimate of the trajectory is subsequently updated to theta i plus 1, which corresponds to a simple addition when using Gauss-Newton optimization. The output theta i plus 1 is passed through a convergence check. If the optimization has not converged, theta i plus 1 is fed as input to p for the next iteration. Otherwise, the process is terminated and the locally optimal theta star is returned. Up until this point, the process is exactly the same as the iterative optimization in GPMP2, except that we have represented it as a computational graph. We now introduce another module W with trainable parameters that outputs at every iteration phi L, the set of parameters that we wish to learn. In our case, these correspond to the covariances for GP and obstacle factors used by P to construct the factor graph. Recall that while phi L are learned from data, our framework can also incorporate phi F, which are a set of fixed parameters input by the user, such as velocity limits or other task-specific constraints. Finally, the output of the planner is scored using a loss function, such as deviation from an expert trajectory. All the computations performed are completely differentiable, and the gradients of the loss function with respect to the learned parameters phi L can be calculated using backpropagation. Internally, the trainable module W is implemented as a feedforward convolutional neural network that takes as input a bitmap image of the environment, a signed distance field, and the current trajectory estimate, and produces phi L as the output at every iteration. Next up, we discuss the loss functions used for training. The first component of the loss function is based on deviation of the planned trajectory from an expert trajectory, which can be generated either by a slow expert planner, such as RRT star, which is what we do in the current experiments, or from human demonstrations, if available. Naively imitating the expert can be harmful in situations where equally good solutions lie in different homotopies than the expert solution, or due to a realizability gap when using human demonstrations. Hence, the second component of our loss, L plan, is used as a regularizer to encourage trajectory smoothness via the GP error and obstacle avoidance via an obstacle cost using a signed distance field, as is often done in motion planning. The overall loss is then a sum of the imitation and planning losses. Training is then done using backpropagation through time by fixing the number of planning iterations during the forward pass. Going back to our motivating example, we see that while fixed hand-tuned covariances can fail across changing environment distributions, our learning-based approach, trained on a data set of different environments, is able to consistently find successful plans by adapting the planner's parameters to the given problem instance. We provide quantitative results in the paper. Note that although the framework allows us to learn both kappa and sigma, in our experiments, since the environment changes, we only learned sigma. In summary, the proposed approach allows us to learn to predict covariances that work on different obstacle distributions and start goal states, thus eliminating the need for excessive hand tuning, predict covariances that vary with the start goal states of the robot in the workspace, the time step along the trajectory, and iteration of optimization. We can also use the structure of the planner to incorporate other planning constraints, such as velocity or joint limits. For more details, please refer to the paper. It allows us to leverage different modes of supervision based on the problem domain. Finally, our key takeaway is that structured learning to plan has the potential to provide the best of both classical and data-driven approaches. Thank you very much for listening.